welcome to another face hammer show um hope everyone's doing all right so today we're getting to talk about season of war fondia fondia fond i'm f I, I would say i'm fond of this but not really um, <laughs> <laughs> um so this thanks games workshop for sending us a review copy so we can talk to you about it yep. um obviously it's out on pre-order today, so you can go and pick it up um, from Element to support us or your local gaming store if you're outside of Europe. Um, Absolutely. Definitely. Um, I think it feels distinctly like the type of book that you could pick up with a couple of buddies and have a fair amount of fun with. Uh, we, however, are going to be concentrating on no fun because we're talking about match play. <laughs> so, hey, uh, I find yeah, match it's... play fun. So, you know. <laughs> Me too. It is um, a... It's a bit of a, I don't know if I use the term schizophrenic book, but it's... Uh, it's a schizophrenic release. It's um, a campaign slash narrative slash open slash organised play book. Um, and I am <laughs> amazing at multitasking, so I'm fine with that. Yeah. So obviously the books come out and this new thing called an incarnate, which we will talk about a lot. Um, there's also this really interesting box set, which has the incarnate and some terrain and a board in it. Which I think is the only way you can get the incarnate. Currently, yeah, by the looks of things. Um, um, no, the uh, the great big chunky bony thing is one of my favourite scenery pieces they've ever released. I love yeah. the idea of it, and that's what I wish uh, endless spells would have liked for Savage Up. So, if anyone's listening that has an ability to <laughs> bring me out a load of chunky stuff to dry brush, then please make it happen. It's weird because like endless spells seems to be like if you're in that period when you got them, you got them, but. <laughs> seems like don't worry savage ox have never got any we don't get new ones where well, they were before and after the the yeah, yeah. uh so yeah were before the love and i just really the... wanted a big green foot the foot of gork that would have been cool right such a, yeah no we're like we're like uh like ghosty tendrils coming off the top and somehow holding itself up could have had a yeah. lot of opportunity to go that one yeah so season of war so what we're gonna do um for people not familiar we talk about match play um so we're going to talk about the book because it has a match play section. It does, but <laughs> prior to the match play section, there's some other stuff that we need to pay attention to, right? Yeah. So this page spread in here, it describes this product as Fondria is the first in a series of books that chronicle the ongoing struggle in mortal realms, part lore source book, part story and part rules expansion. There you go. We don't do law on this channel, and I haven't read I can, it. I take, I take things sideways. Have you read it? I, look, I don't think you've I, read it. I, no, of course I haven't. I've looked at the pictures, but it's take me for. But <laughs> those, <laughs> those pictures, like my favourite section of this book is, is this. Like, this bit's brilliant. That, yeah. made me stop, that made me stop and read. I um, almost looked at that as well. I've got a proper... I've got, <laughs> I've got a proper soft spot for exactly that type of drawing. And whoever did those drawings is incredible. I don't know which one their artist is responsible, but yeah, that River Troll one got me in the uh, the old school feels hard. So like, apart from this it. page, because it's full of dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They've not got anyone set on them, so I'm kind of down with that they're allowed, right? Oh, and there's a what on earth is a Fondian flat horn? No. Uh, oh, maybe that's something that'll appear at some point. That'd be a cool model. What about a growl oak? A growl <laughs> oak. What's that? I don't know. It looks like what um, Nurgle's terrain should have looked like. <laughs> maybe there's a silver neck thing in the near distant future called a growl oak. Or a terrapin. Terrapin, I just saw that. And barbed sniffer weed spears. Ooh, gleam spike? If they were going to be a thing. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything in it that's or telegraphing anyway. future things. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Could be auspicious. Um, anyway, on the page after that. that, on the page after all of that fluff nonsense, we've got some um, hardcore, all singing, all dancing, elemental adjective. Elemental adjective. Yeah. So oh, I don't know what to think of this. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so we'll talk about the rules, which is the bit it talks about incarnate. So a new rules and a war scroll, which allow you to include an incarnate. 
in any Age of Sigma army. Perfected. Any. We've got the Realm Rules, which is like the Realm Sphere rules that are in the handbook. And we've got the War in Fondria Battle Pack. And there is a new match play battle pack in there, which we'll talk about. We're not going to cover the open and narrative stuff. We already that. spoke about Fluff for 90 seconds, which is a record for us. So. <laughs> we have got a couple of lore shows, but they're old school. Um, so an incarnate is an entity born of pure realm energy. They are allied units that can be included in any army and are bonded to a hero. It is treated as a unit of one model. Um bonding an incarnate must be bonded to a hero in the army it's part of bonding an incarnate to a hero is a unique enhancement so i guess that means you can't do it with special characters yeah i mean I, that's probably a decent way to protect against it being bonded to something that's too powerful as well if that is uh -huh. relevant because special characters or unique heroes cannot have enhancements right so yeah um a hero cannot be bonded to more than one incarnate an incarnate cannot be bonded to more than one hero so it's like a pairing. And it's not said anywhere you're only allowed one of these per army, correct? Uh, correct. It says an army that includes an incarnate cannot include any other allied unit. So I would say that one there oh. would mean you can't. Because oh, yeah, it is it. an allied unit and you can okay. only have, so you couldn't have two. Um, oh, and points values would stop that anyway. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, but sense. it excludes. So it says that, however, incarnate can be included even if its points cost exceeds the maximum number of points you can spend in the battle pack you're using. So you can only have one. It's bonded to a hero, and you can't have any ally. Oops. So if you have one, that's all your ally is gone, done. Yeah. Regardless. Um, so there's a rule called Wild Form. If the hero an incarnate is bonded to is slain, it goes to its Wild Form. An incarnate in wild form remains part of your army, but treats other units in your army as enemy units, and other units in your army treat it as an enemy unit. Special rules apply to incarnate in wild form, which will be on the war scroll. Um, so this is once an incarnate reverts to its wild form, it can attack and be attacked by units on either army. Remember that a model must attack in the combat phase if it's able to do so, which may force you to attack units in your own army, um, and for those to attack it back. Because if you're within three, you have to pile in, you have to attack, and all that, you know? Okay. Um, so they're a bit strange in Carnage. They don't have wounds. They have states. So Incarnates have states. Each state has a level and a domination range, as shown on the table. When we show the war scores, it'll be a bit more obvious. They start the battle at primal, which is level two, if you think of it in levels. Under certain circumstances, the level can go up or down. When this happens... Um, the state changes to the new level. For example, if an incarnate cannot go up from two to three, it would go from primal to empowered. Incarnate can never go above three, and if it reaches zero, it's removed from play. So you do allocate wounds to an incarnate. However, it doesn't have a wounds characteristic. It cannot be slain. Instead, in the battle shock phase, if any wounds are allocated to an incarnate, the commanding player rolls 3d6. If the roll is less than or equal to the number of wounds uh, allocated to the card, its level is reduced by one. So you need to roll over the wounds you've been allocated. Um, then you heal all those wounds. And it's treated as having a wound characteristic of 18 for any rules that refer to a wounds characteristic, like uh, your kill bow, for example. If the incarnate is affected by an ability that slays it without any wounds or mortal wounds being allocated, the level is goes down by one instead. Okay, that figures. Um, so if you Archeon sword it, it'll go down a level rather than actually get removed. The information needed to use an incarnate in the battle is on its incarnate war scroll. Um, the information on the incarnate war scroll works um, as information on a unit's war scroll, unless noted otherwise. The effect that being bonded has on the incarnate and the hero they are bonded to is recorded here. Empowerment, the method by which the level is can be increased, and wild form, what happens when it's in wild form. So the in incarnate war squad will have might change or have extra rules in those those areas. It's four hundred points, it's a behemoth, a single, and it's unique. So, what does it do? 
flies, 12 inches. It does. Um, you've got a weird, I don't like this peace sign wound characteristic of it's, there's no wounds, it's weird. The dial, uh, the stat dial. We're not um, the piece, are we? No. Well, it's upside down, so maybe that's there. <laughs> but it moves 12, bravery turn 4 up save. Um, and it has six attacks, freeze, freeze, ren two, damage two, and one attack, freeze, two, ren three, damage four. But it's got a little star, and it says add the incarnate's level to the attacks. So oh, if wow, you're at level okay. two, it'd be eight and three. If you got to level three, it'd be nine and four, so on and so forth. That uh, second attack really does notch up. <laughs> yeah, it does really out increase its um, output. So um, the incarnate can only receive commands issued by the bonded hero. So that's quite important because obviously it's not in range. Yeah. Um, if you issue all out attack and it's received by the incarnate, then the command is received by all friendly units that are wholly within the domination range that are within three of an enemy unit that have not already had a command that phase. So that domination range is 12 inches. Um, if it's empowered or 10 when it's primal, which is what it starts at eight at weakened, but that's basically for one command point, depending on where you position this bit, he's got a big base as well. You can literally get plus one to hit on multiple units with that. The, the, uh, the guy issuing that would be quite a lot. You end up with this great big, like, T. Yeah. 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 So, um, and you also add one to cast dispel and unbind for a wizard that is within domination range of the card that they are bonded to. So if you, for example, had an Eidolon aspect of the sea and he was bound to this incarnate, he would get plus one to his casting dispels and unbinds with a reroll because he's an aspect of the sea. And if you took the trait which allowed you to cast extra spells on a seven or more, then you only have to roll a six with a reroll. So the, the, there are combos out there. That's only one that leaps to my head because I've been looking at Idenf recently. So, <laughs> um, if a monster is slain by wounds inflicted by this incarnate's attacks, then increase its level by one. So it gets better as it kills monsters. Yep, whether it's bound or not. Yeah. Um, and then wild form add one to hit rolls for attacks made by the incarnate while it's in wild form. It can run and charge the same term while it's in its wild form. If this incarnate is in wild form and within 12, a unit will end the spell at the start of your charge phase. It must charge um, if possible. So obviously if it's in wild form, it's treating your units as enemies, but because you control it and you can move it, you could just move it away from you towards them and it's going to charge them. So it doesn't really make much of a difference if it's, it's unbound. Fast enough. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not got a, it's not got a damage table. It's always moved 12. So it shouldn't be difficult to, uh, Mm -hmm. run and 12 it away from you and get and it flies them. so yeah, yeah you know um so you just need to make sure when you're playing with this you don't leave your men within three inches of it because if they kill your bonded hero then suddenly it's going to be in combat with your own army then you'd have to retreat and then your models wouldn't actually be able to bubble wrap that hero yeah be so you have to be really to careful a, with that um, like a five wound grot or, something <laughs> like that. or a four wound shaman yeah get plus one to cast though uh, <laughs> but you might or you might do that to kill your shaman so you get run in charge and you can just throw it to their army um in flame savagery so the following effects are to all units holy within its domination range um the units commanding player can reroll run rolls and charge rolls for the unit the Ooh. unit cannot retreat um so you wouldn't even be able to retreat if you were in combat of that so you know uh <laughs> they could be that could be a bit bad yeah. uh so that's not just yours that's all yeah yeah so yeah so the commanding player can reroll run and charge rolls but the unit cannot retreat so you could the enemy can't retreat from you right that's how i read that right and the next one as well if the unit is a wizard that is not bonded subtract one from cast dispel and unbind for that wizard so if you're within its domination range, you can't actually leave combat with it. Right. 
so that would be really bad if your hero got killed and it was within three of one of the units that was wholly within the range because then you wouldn't be able yeah, to move yeah. away from it and then you're probably gonna have to play around this or you're yeah. just dying yeah um, or um you have like some teleport away stuff but that's really that's, but for quite, a that's lot. quite powerful because you can basically pin your opponent's army and it's because bullshit. it well, because it only goes down one level per battle shock phase, you can't kill it, right? It's like Marathi. So it's, you can you pin their away. army with it. Uh -huh. They can't get away from it. So if you've got a shooting army, this would actually be amazing because you just launch it into their army and they can't actually do anything about it. Well, imagine those snakes, Marathi, this. <laughs> Marathi with this, yeah. Obviously, you can change. So you'd have to have a thing where there's plenty of other... Don't, don't worry, do it as a fight. <laughs> Um, oh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's right. The following effects apply to all units wholly within the domination range. The unit commanding player can reroll, so the commanding player can reroll runs and charges. The unit cannot retreat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the unit's Everyone... commanding player, so that means all, yeah, so all units run, reroll runs and charges in range, even enemy within units, range. because the commanding player decides. Ah. Uh... Otherwise, it would be that you you could make your opponent re-roll their charge to oh. fail, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it gives all units that, okay. So um, everyone wants to run towards it because it's frenzied, basically. Just make, yeah, it just makes that, people crazy. So got rules um, that that. In your charge phase, if this incarnates within 12, an endless spell that was summoned by an enemy wizard, so you can't charge your own endless spells, right? It can attempt to charge and can make a charge move as long as that charge move finishes within half an inch of an enemy model or endless spell that was summoned by an enemy wizard. And you can then do the devour endless spell rampage. Pick an endless spell summoned by an enemy wizard that's within three inches of the incarnate roll 2d6. Add the incarnate's level to the roll. If the roll is greater than the casting value, uh, the endless spell is dispelled and the level of the incarnate is increased by one. On Ooh. any other roll, the level of the incarnate is reduced by one. You just wouldn't want to put any spells close to it, would you? Well, yeah. I mean, unless you've got one that's quite hard to stop, because if they roll under it, then they lose a level. Lose so, level. yeah. But it's a bit risky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, two d six plus two would reliably get rid of most things. But it's pretty horrendous because it's basically a model that can't die, right? Oh yeah, well it can't die for X turns. So if you have, uh, uh, what's it power up by? Monsters killing being slain monsters, yeah, or or killing eating being... spells, basically. Yeah, da, 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 and they have to be from an enemy wizard. So the interesting true. thing, yeah. okay, if you had a bonded hero that was quite weak, right, and you <laughs> kill. The bonded hero so it becomes wild and you had an endless spell with another wizard because it treats all your models as enemies Power up and send suddenly up. the endless spells are enemy endless spells right level three because they're by enemy charge. so you could actually oh, eat oh. your own endless spell to you could basically get one that's easy to cast dump it next to it eat your own spell to keep it powered up <laughs> So as long as that hero died, the one that you were bonded to, your other yeah. heroes would be enemies. So therefore, the endless spell would be an enemy endless spell. It would be summoned by an enemy wizard because it all yeah. your what was enemies, enemies, and then you could literally just keep dropping it next to it. And because you control where it moves, you could always make sure it's in range of the enemy. And just keep your army away from it. Absolutely. Question. So if you're you're controlling it, you get to re-roll run rolls and charge rolls for it because you're its commanding player. N well, it's no because the following effects apply to all units wholly within the dominion range. So every unit, then the unit's commanding player, whether that might be the ten goblins that are in range or the five elves, they're both a unit. The commanding player of that unit gets to decide if they re-roll, run, and charge. The incarnate itself, yes, is, that... is is so you get to re-roll, run, and charge on the incarnate. And when it's in wild form, you get to add one to hit rolls, and you get to run and charge with it. Yeah. So, 
it's, you, it's a you probably bind it to. And the irony is you could use the endless spell to kill your own wizard. <laughs> so you could actually fire burning head or something through your own wizard to kill him or something. And then I'm sure there's a tech there. I'm there sure there's a tech. There, like, I, I, Grave Tide I, used to contact anything, didn't it? It wasn't enemy yeah or something well, i know like for sure you can hurt yourself with burning head because i've burning done it head, with yeah. teleporting the gash so um there'll be a way so it opens up a lot of stuff that could be like, fairly abusive yeah i mean well the model's open to abuse right because it's brand new and it does unique things but like, we've already compared it to marathi in terms of not being killable instantly that's quite good Things not being able to run away from it. That is historically incredible and fairly unique within the game. Um, it's got some good... I mean, and then it's got some attacks that can get up to basically Kragnos level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you can end up with four, four attacks. Twos, twos, twos rent, three, damage, four. Three, damage, four. Yes, yeah, please. And nine attacks, twos, threes, rent, two, damage, two. Yeah. Plus, it's a yes. monster, so it can do all the rampages anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, if you issue all that attack to it, it, it cascades to all units while you're bonded. Seems pretty good, especially yeah. like especially in some armies, like cheap crap armies. This seems amazing in like, Savage Orcs, oh, right? Yeah, Savage Orcs, Gloom Spy, like the 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 forgotten destruction armies, which have got a lot of bodies on the board. Like, that should be really good in Nighthorn. Oh yeah, it'll be, yeah. There you go. Forgotten armies with bodies on the board. Because Night Haunt are just crying out for a big monster, right? They are. Not only that, but it doesn't do any mauls. So if it goes crazy and hits you, you still got your fifty percent chance to save everything it does, regardless of how rendy it is. But it should it never is. hit you. It shouldn't. But if it did, you, you should, you're also because you move it before you have to charge, so you just move it away from you. Yeah, yeah. Like the, and its its movement is more than the charge range so all the same as a charge max so as long as you're not as long as you don't end up doing something silly like leaving it within range of you so when you're unbonded you're within combat with it and you can't retreat yeah then you're fine there'll be some interesting things when you do something like they charge you and you pile in and you you spread out to drop out of the domination range oh yeah yeah or casualty remove. Or... Or, yeah, so you because you want to make sure you're not wholly within. It'd be quite hard to do it. Um, no, situ situations will come up. I, like, I'm just thinking of like what would a Lumen F army with this and Sentinels and and it bonded and to a fox. fox do, just destroy everything. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it, like because you can't retreat, it fights really hard. You can't really so kill horrible. it, and the Sentinels are just shooting you to bits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got that thing that can deal with this. Could yeah. you just pin? I mean, you've got to pin like two mega gargons or something. Just be like, because the fact they can't retreat, they can't just walk away and it's stand also, on an objective. It's a unique monster, but it's not a hero, so it fits in one drops as well. <laughs> like, yeah, because it goes into the armies. yeah goes into that mon behemoth slot, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I'm thinking about in my deepkin swapping the turtle out for this. A turtle. Um, quite a cool model. I don't. I don't know what I think of this because it's got a load of interesting mechanics attached to it. Um, it's not too. It's not. It might be too cheap, but it's not a cheap model. You know, four hundred points isn't mega mega cheap. Um, For what it does, I think it is. I think. I think, I think it's a bargain. But um, you know, people's <laughs> armies will get smaller for including it, um, which would speed up games. It's got a relatively simple profile. Just like you know, I'm just saying things that you could say about Gargans here. But I do like how they play games fast as well. So that's nice, but at the same time it seems like mega strong. And because it's open to everyone, I mean we've seen issues with uh things in Stormcast because everyone in order can ally with them. This can ally with everything in the game. So how do you balance something like that that can be used by every army? Yeah, I I think when you fundamentally got things like cannot retreat, that immediately makes it. I use the term NPE, but it's like yeah, it could completely screw people over. Well, they've been actively removed from the game, haven't they? They were mm. removed from not to bang on about them, the poor boys, but the bone splitters. They lost Confly, uh, Teach, 
uh, Tinch has can't be somewhere or did have it for a while in the tournament. I think it still does. It it's still in this it. capricious host. Yeah, yeah. And you've for got, a while, you've got it. In, they're still in the game. I don't think it's being removed. I mean, there's still stuff coming in that stops you retreating. That's like in other books. Okay. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Army wide, it seems to have been pushed away a bit because it's quite good. Um, but uh, yeah. And like, I know you might. Insane. And even then, like to. It, you could do like 12 wounds to it and they just pop a 14 on the dice and it doesn't lose a level I mean what a, yeah that's fair like uh, if you do <laughs> what's it save 4 4 plus not got enough to save good I mean it, it's not crazy defensible it can't it but can't you're going to have to dedicate itself. an awful lot to, to actually like drop it a level over a couple of turns, which is way different to over one turn. Because even if it only gets like three turns worth of attacking, it it's going to do a lot of work. I mean, uh, the average on I mean, like you roll three d six, is it? For what the yeah? So it's up to eighteen. So That's it. so, so you 18. need to the do really like eleven ten and a half. Yeah. So you need yeah. to do like eleven. Yeah. wounds really to well plus give you a it, like, good if, chance if, of dropping if you definitely it. won it like you'd be banking on it if you rolled 12 or 13 plus probably 13 plus i would say and that's in a turn quite a lot. so without cheating that's going to be tick or without ranged damage that's going to be tickly but even if it people. is ranged like like do you want to shoot at it and do like 15 wounds when it might not oh, even matter heartbreaking. when heartbreaking. like they roll they just pop 17 and you're like cool that was a waste of a turn oh how much resource I mean, did i dedicate to that would you just ignore it but then you can't really ignore it if it's pinning your army the likelihood of rolling 18 17 16 15 or 14 having ways to move not too low at a sequence like translocation to move out of combat with it would be big so if you're playing Stormcast and they pin you with that, you can translocate the unit out because it's not a retreat. It's a setup, right? Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, it, it's good. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. I don't know how I feel, but. I think we're going to, we're going to find some more opinions that are like that in this book. But it, I, I like something you, Fully different thing dropped into the game. I like it's not a spell. Um, I don't mm. particularly like Ender spells. Um, it's basically but, like a universal monster, isn't it? Like, it's like yeah, it's like a harness can... thing. Yeah, every army's got you know access to plenty of heroes. I wonder if they'll it. do one for every realm because this is like the beast when it's got the arrow on it on its heart. It's like that realm stone. You have like light, which is. I mean, historically, light has been like stopping units from fleeing or defending them. Because you imagine if eventually there's like eight enemies. different monsters for each of the different realms, and each one's that'd, got uh, its own unique yes, that'd, yeah. rules. If we, ca- if we carry on like this, that'd be a thousand pound investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so it's like basically like buying two armies at the moment, right? So. <laughs> Unless you start with these chlorine start correcting, then yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've got the so that's the incarnate. Now we've also got he's the kind of the headliner, isn't he? Yeah. This. So he's in any game you play. He yeah, could be let's there. Let's your thoughts on how often you think people will see him. I don't like it. I'm I don't like Marafi, so I don't like something else that's doubling up on that. I'm really interested what people think of it and how often they think it will be seen. I, I think you'll see it a lot. Using it sc- yeah, I, I think you'll see it a lot. Something using its skull, that's one of the best skulls in Warhammer. So, um, I think you'll see it in 40% of armies. In tournament? Yeah. Competitive. Because it, it gives you a tool that can disrupt your opponent so much. It's not that big an investment. You think how many armies spend 400 points on a monster, like double more crusher. I'll drop, I mean, one, you, drop one, put one of them in, have a more crusher you, in that. It's probably more. You didn't even lose the monster. Yeah, like rogue take... idols, you know, like is that better than a rogue idol? I'd say yes, yes. He's so, you take that instead though, of a rogue idol, do you take it instead of a giant mercenary? Yes, take it so... to the Bellacor, Bellacor screws Probably. people over, yeah, yeah. So, it's Bellacor and that in Legion of the First Prince. Bomb, 
Like, Absolute bomb. Grim. Yeah, yeah. There's some horrors. Like, right do you now. want a stone horn or do you want a realm beast thing that can't I die in turn? I'll take I'll the realm beast. One, drop one of my five stone horns for it. Why not? I've got four others. Well, I mean, why not? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we've got the realm rules. Region of War Fondia. Get There's, ready, peeps. So this is weird. This is like realm rules, but they're in the core rules. But then the other realm rules are in the Gurish Heartlands, which are in the battle pack, I think. So Metamorphosis is the spell attention to a monster. Realm Command is fight at top of your profile. So these are the same ones that are in the handbook. Monstrous Denizens. Uh, there's a lot of words. And I'll make this as, quick, us, Russ. as quickly as I can. I don't think any event will play this. Should play this. Or should. Because basically you set up a monster. It's a denizen. That monster doesn't have a rider. But Nagash is a monster, right? Doesn't have a rider. Doesn't say anything about no uniques or no wizards or anything. Doesn't say anything about non-heroes. Pick a monster, lol. Keyword monster. So, Krondris, right? Kazrai. Why not? He's not bad. Not and that's a roll off, and then you roll off who controls it, and then if you can use it in Karna, and then it's wild. But then if it's wild and you control it, you roll off who controls it. I I just not not happening in match play. If I'm a TO, I'm not touching this with a barge pole because it's so open to abuse and it's so random. Or, or you know, like three fifty fifty rolls in a row lose the game. Yeah, like completely. I mean, it's just complete happen. bonkers. Do you want do you want a nine hundred point monster, seven hundred point monster with two wicked spells? It's got no it? place in competitive play because no, it's this, not it's too random, it's too it's too swingy. This is the type of thing that I would see in a campaign weekend and use that as a justification for not attending, because I know that it would annoy me too much over the weekend. So. Yeah. And if yeah. you did as a TO if you wanted to use it, you'd have to write a restricted list on what those monsters could be or dictate what they are. I'd or house rule say, it. Yeah, 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 I'd specifically say pick, you know, like three or four from each Grand Alliance that are fairly common, not too good, like, I don't know, Mongol size maximum or something like that. Mm. Or just tell everyone that they can have one of the foot giants. I think that's a better approach. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's not going to break the game. You can have a foot giant off your pot. Yeah. Because it's the winner of the roll-off decides what mods they use. And then you can so see you can have a big box of monsters, depending on I've your I've got players. this squig. I've got Nagash. <laughs> And then, like, you, you, what they suddenly control Nagash and can cast magic with it. Tom Morsley's just it. gonna. Tom Morsley's gonna wheel out his like, you know, his dinner trolley with seventeen different options. Look at the board and be like, this one. Well, you just. But then, like, if you don't win that roll off, and they pick yeah. the monster, then then you roll off to see who d determines it, the control of it. Yeah. Just no. Just no. Um, and there's a new mystical terrain chart if you're playing in. Fondia. Um so you know whatever that is. It, so I read it. It's it's kind of like it's kind of alright. Some of them are somewhat interesting. You can get um bonuses um for the rest of the battle on a unit and stuff like that. Um I mean, it can only be affected more than once. Um but it's uh it's just it's a really itchy unit. It's kind of funny. So you've got surprisingly ordinary. So roll on the train in the core rules. Then you've got thrashing Narlok roots. Tefus D three mortal wins. So it's basically I'm not going to read it all out. But you could see it, but you know, it's magic terrain rules if you're in that realm, which I think might be okay because it's might do something a little bit different. But... I quite like it. If you check out number six, so you get to cast the wild form spell, which mm -hmm. if you're within, you know, if you're within range of it, you get it as a spell. I think that's kind of a cool idea, not to OP, and it's a it's a fairly it's not a crazy spell. Add two to charge and mm -hmm. run rolls for a unit uh, casting value of five, range of twelve from a wizard who's within three inches of that piece. That's not a bad idea. No, I, like I think like it, at least it makes the train a little bit more useful, relevant, relevant. Yeah. yeah. So. You probably use those rules. Um, so um, then you've got the strife in Fondia battle pack. So this is what they describe a matched play campaign. 
Um, two or more players is an ideal campaign for a ga club, gaming club or event. You play five battles in order, and then you score victory points depending on what happens. So these are linked scenarios. So, you know, I'm not going to go through all of this word for word, but essentially, you you basically it's it's got all the stuff like your points limit pick your army your battlefield roles all that kind of stuff allied units coalition endless spells so it tells you how to pick your army so it's, it's essentially the same but you've got to use the battle plans in this book there's only five so that dictates it's a five round event right which most events are to be honest yeah so um and then you've got your battle tactics terrain features um things like that so it's all all the stuff you'd see in the general's handbook so it's like a general's handbook pack so if you play this you're playing these rules not those rules if that makes sense um and then they've got the core battalions so you've got your not an alpha beast pack but a monstrous kill pack um so all monsters can do titanic jaw um so it's basically like you know these are new commanders you've got hunters of the halflands which are the same and then you've yep. got the incarnate masters of gur um yeah one drop deployment for that um which is uh it's an incarnate um a leader hero and then uh up to three um up to three troops units and you only lose control of the incarnate after everything in the battalion has died quite tasty that one mm. so although i think you kind of want it to be wild by the looks of it but <laughs> if you're looking to keep it under control then uh you know you're gonna have three battle line units and quite a lot of armies anyway so and it lowers your drops so you can have that and one drop and be two drops i think it doesn't um, even need to be a battle line it could be any unit because it's just troops, true it? so it's just a unit yeah. that isn't artillery or monster basically so or a hero. yeah imagine you'd see that one a fair bit if people don't want to lose control of their stuff yeah um so you've got grand strategies so lord of incarnate when the battle ends you complete this grand strategy any incarnates who are starting an army that have not reverted to their wild forms so straight away that formation that that grand strategy might be a good way to go rule of mysteries uh complete this grand strategy if you control more terrain with a fond your mystery terrain scenery rule than your opponent so monstrous presence um if there are more monsters from your starting army than there are monsters from your opponent's starting army. Um, and then it's wizards or priests still alive. Then if there are no heroes from your opponent's army on the battlefield, uh, battle line units from hold the line and killed their general, not lost your general. So some easier ones and then some harder ones towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, tells you what starting army is. Then you've got battle tactics, which will be used during this pack. So it's only if you're playing this campaign. So it's pick one battle line unit for your opponent. So it's your savage ranks. Uh, one battle line unit for your opponent's starting army. Uh, if you destroy it this turn, if it was destroyed by a constrite incarnate or an ability by a constrite incarnate, you get two instead of one battle tactics. Second one is control one of the terrain pieces that was controlled by your opponent. Uh, destroy the bonded so um you complete this if an enemy hero bonded to incarnate is slain if that hero is destroyed by attack by a friendly incarnate an ability by an incarnate you count as having two instead of one yeah military advance which is like the previous one where uh three units have to run within each other you get two uh battle tactics instead of one if one of them is an incarnate and one is a hero that's bonded to it though so him and his little bro run off together mm. with someone else and get extra points you get abolish it so when you reveal it pick an enemy incarnate complete the battle tactic if that is abolished during this turn uh if it's abolished made by an attack by a friendly incarnate or an ability from the incarnate you count as having two instead of one it's a bit weird because i don't know how you abolish it with an attack when you roll unless you allocated wounds of it i don't know because you roll at the end don't you so i don't know how yeah. you do it with an attack or an ability from an incarnate maybe unless yeah. you had an ability that auto lowers auto kills then you could do it but this incarnate yeah. doesn't so interesting it does uh, it does kind of open up are there going to be more because it says incarnate yeah. and then maybe that might be more relevant but in this one there's only one out so i don't i don't know but 
Yeah. Um, uh, you've got monstrous dominance at the end, uh, so you need at least two or friendly monsters on the battlefield, and there's no enemy monsters on the battlefield. If one of those friendly monsters is incarnate, you can't just have to choose two battlefields instead of one. Well, that's Finally. pretty easy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ship, like, is there if you've already there? killed their monsters, right, and you just go, oh, that's auto then. Hello. Yeah. Um, and then Amber Spearhead, you can beat this battle tactic if there's two or more units from your starting army wholly within your opponent's territory. If one or more of those units is incarnate, you can't as you think two battle tactics instead of one. So um, obviously there's quite a push to having an incarnate. So if you're playing in this campaign pack, you pretty much have to take an incarnate. Yeah. Absolutely. Because most of the battle tactics, you get bonuses and you need one. So, and why wouldn't you? Yeah. So if you, I if someone does run this event over a weekend, I think it'd be fun, but I think it will be like, it is a very narrative event, not really a, what I'd call a match play event. It's I match play because it's organized play, but... Organized but not matched. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got the scenario. So one of the things I didn't take a picture of was the score sheet, which is a bit I thought it was just a standard sheet, but it's not. Which I don't know if you can hold up to the camera Byron, because yours doesn't flip round for me. Absolutely. So there you've got um you've got your you've got your kind of number of battle tactics done, grand strategy battle one, drawn battle campaign victory points, and you scored points over the campaign. So you play each mission, record it, and you score the overall points, and that's how you determine who'd win the campaign, um, which is quite interesting. Kind of self-contained, isn't it? In yeah. Way? It's quite neat. and talking It about, feels like organised garage gaming, doesn't it, basically? Yeah. If you were playing in a yeah. club, like if you had, like I don't know, like the Ch- Chapman War Chiefs, so like we've got, the, we've got the venue for the weekend, let's play, yeah. a, let's play this. Um, foul, you could do it at a thousand points if you really wanted to. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you could probably play five games in a day if you did a thousand points. You could, a thousand, well, if everyone's got an incarnate, you could, yeah, <laughs> it'd be a bit, it'd be a bit random, but it, it um, event. and then you could say that every table's got a giant on it, for example, and then yeah, like a mega that you have to roll off for. It'd be fine, fun, I think. Um, yeah, but like, it, it definitely feels more of that type. Mm. But just too a bit too random. You just have to accept that it's going to be fully random here. Like, yeah, you're not going to be able to draw much of a conclusion from the win. You'll win. You'll lose that. the roll off four turns in a row and feel really bad. But but it will happen. <laughs> um. So you got no, clash, then? clash. Yeah, clash in the borderlands. So it's basically saying you set up as it is. Um, long edge. You don't. You don't roll off. It's the person who finished deploying has priority, so they get to go first, right? They have to go first, yeah. Um, oh, I think Got priority is just the choice, so I don't think it makes you go first. I think oh, it just makes uh, you get the choice. Do not roll up. Oh, I got you. Um, and then it's... Uh, da, 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 da. The players can pick from the following battle tactics in addition to those on page 104. Raiders, pick one friendly unit. You complete this battle tactic if the unit raids enemy territory at the end of this turn. Um, and raiding enemy territory uh, means that you've run into your opponent's territory, but then you disappear, which is... Oh, so you run off the board, basically. Yeah, yeah. you, you just jump Players into pick their any of their units that have been free of the raid edge and more than free from enemy units, remove the unit. Those units do not count as being slain. A huge bonus if you've got fast units that can run around opponents ah, so you've got battle them. tactics pick a friendly unit you complete this battle if that unit if the enemy enters the enemy territory raids okay so if you raid a unit off yeah you can do that got... once though right because it's a battle yeah, tactic, it's a battle tactic. And then you've got blockade uh blockade pick one enemy unit within 12 of your opponent's raid edge you complete this battle tactic if that unit has been destroyed by the end of this turn so it's just all about fighting on the borders of those lines mm-hmm Glorious. Um, At the end of the battle, each player totals the points by the units in the army that have raided. If a raiding unit has less than half the model to start the battle with, it only contributes half its points. Right, okay. So so you're basically raiding each other, trying to stop them getting off your board edge, or trying to get off their board edge, and every unit you take off the board gives you points towards winning. 
if both players could make the same number of battle tactics, so then it comes down to who did the most battle tactics. Yep. And then if only one player did the grand strategy, then they would win. Otherwise, it's a draw, basically, or a minor, that it's a draw. So, quite interesting. All I think all of these are interesting ideas. They're fairly you, computer gamey. You don't have interactive markers. No, exactly. So That's you don't why score I think. for like you don't score points per turn or anything like that. You would literally just go in. How many men can I get off the table, and how many tactics yeah. can I do? The tactics matter only as a tie break, right? Yeah, if neither player wins a major, so you've got to have at least 200 points more than the other person. Otherwise, it comes down to who did the most battle tactics. Yeah, so it's just a tie break. But, uh, at the end of the battle, da, 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 um, at the end of the battle, each player totals points as the units in their army that raided enemy territory. If a raided unit is less than half, oh, blah, 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 blah. If one player's total is at least 200 points higher, the enemy wins a major victory. That so it is player. about the yeah. So yes, you, you, about... the points of what you raided off. That's if you win major or not. Yeah. If you don't, even if you get a major, then it's a minor, depending on battle tactics. If you both did the same, it comes down to grand strategy. Otherwise, if you both got your grand strategy, it's a draw. You know. So quite interesting. Very um, different. Yeah. And then the invasion, the next one, is the same. It's no objective markers again. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff in the game that gets bonuses for being near objective markers, right? So, yeah, you know, like your Stormcast getting bonuses in Round Stormkeep three. and all that kind of stuff and your Fire Slayers and your kicking objectives for Krakens and all that. That's all doesn't matter, right? So... Yeah. so this, is, this is basically... Um, it's control called the table quarters, basically. These remind me a lot of old school missions. Yeah, I think back really in the day. Yeah. Small deployment zone as well, 12 inches from the center of the table, because that's where your territory is basically. That is quite small, yeah. You've got this tiny little, like, crescent east scoop in this yeah, corner. Yeah, because normally here. it's nine, isn't it? So... This corner, exactly. That's a big difference as well with it being a radius. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so we won't read it all out, but basically we we kind of think these are interesting, right? Yeah, I like I, I don't quite know what to think of them. I think maybe they would need some tweaking, but I really I mean look at this map. <laughs> That's already interesting, right? What's okay. going on there? That is cool. But this is the prize, isn't it? So you get like a relic or something, don't you? I think yeah, I think this is an awesome idea. So um Yeah, one trying to be a relic one. site, okay. Until there are five relic sites. And then after deciding who has priority, the loser of the priority roll picks one relic site, rolls the dice, it scores higher than the number of the battle round. That is no longer a relic site. If it's equal to then the battle and the relic is hidden. So it's it's only in one spot. When it's only one spot, that's automatically where it is. And then if you control the terrain feature in which the relic's hidden and there are no enemies within six of that terrain. So that's quite Complete, interesting. It's completely different from normal Warhammer. Yeah. Like, it's so weird. Yeah, and the defender sets up the number of terrain features on the table. Is that the um, person who's in territory B? Yeah. The attacker chooses which player uses A and which uses B. Okay. So... I kind of like that because it's like it's with food like one cuts one chooses it's like don't be a dick because this could be mine or yours so let's go <laughs> Stop yeah completely different mm. do you alternate deployment it says the players then use alternate and deployment to start with the attacker yeah okay. yeah yeah cool um, I don't really like the idea of them <laughs> the next mission is like the attacker's got a tiny bit. The, the rest of it is the other person. Wonderful. Yes, please, <laughs> Nurgle. <laughs> so, so this one, it says, um, if one player won their last battle and their opponent did not, then the player that won their last battle is the attacker, the opponent is the ambusher. If one player lost their last battle, the opponent achieved a draw, then it's ambusher. Uh, it ever sort of roll off. So basically, if you're playing in a tournament, 
you might say that they lost it and you won it, therefore you would know who it would be. Otherwise, you could have both won and you have to roll off. Um, you can get an artifact of power to their hero because you've got the relic, right? So, so it's quite cool. It's got like a story element to it. The deployment's interesting in this as well. So um, the attacker cannot set up units in reserve, uh, which is the, the little box. Um, Ambush has set up units in their army wholly within their territory and more than 12 from all enemy units or wholly within their territory, wholly on a train feature, and more than three from all enemy units. Um, just such a... Uh, yeah, there, there's, a, there's more going on in this one than you'd think, like, especially in deployment. Oh, so you up. get close if you're on terrain, basically. Yeah, yeah. The ambush decides who has the first turn. Again, an important decision. So it's kind of managing people's not aggroing or doing something, doing something silly. And you have to like, you could have like heroes around the other hero with the relic to pick it up if you die, otherwise you lose the relic. That's the Age of Empires. Yeah. Uh -huh. The opposing player can take give the relic to a hero in their army that's been free of the same model. If there's no eligible heroes, then the, the relic is lost. Oh, so they've got to take it with one of their heroes. But if you lose it, then that, then it, you can't get a major, right? Now your opponent five when their stuff would have standing in the way or whatever. So you could, like, if you kill that hero and you're not near it, you can't actually get the relic. So you could actually, like, oh, this is going really badly. I'm going to run my hero into your, like, random unit of good guys away from all your heroes. You kill him, yeah. and then you drops it, and you're like, oh, I can't get a major now. So. <laughs> interesting. Again, Warhammer, not as we know it. Yeah, it's quite it's quite an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. um, cut off the head, I guess this is killing a general, it sounds like it. Uh, it got some interesting stuff in it. The battle tactics are kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so um let's look at this one the relic uh the attacker can give one universal artifact uh, to a hero in their army this artifact is power of course called the relic um the relic can be given to any hero even if they already have an artifact of power um deployment is kind of two elves fairly normal map by the standards of this steam the relic if a hero bearing the relic is slain before the hero is removed from play the opposing player can give the relic to a hero in the army that's within three of the same model, if there are no eligible heroes within three of the same model, the relic is lost. Um, so it just disappears from the table full stop at that point. Yep. Yep. Um, battle tactics. Fortune favors the bold. You can beat this battle tactic if the model chosen to be your general is within three inches of an enemy hero at the start of the combat phase. Nothing to do with relics, just close to a hero. Uh, the better part of honor, you can beat this battle tactic if the model chosen to be your general retreats this turn. So uh, don't have him close to an incarnate. Um... No. <laughs> and it says, um, end of the third round and each subsequent battle round, the player immediately wins a major if the model chosen to be their opponent's general has been slain and the model chosen to be their general has not been slain. Just kill the enemy general, basically. And then it comes down to, if you don't, if that doesn't happen, then it's... Um, battle tactics yeah so, so the relic's just kind of running around doing it the relic's funny because like you could give like the wizard tome to a wizard to a guy you kill it and then give it to one of your guys because you swap the artifacts you actually get oh, the, yeah. the item so yeah that's kind of cool um that's the five missions so like obviously you play those in order what happened the one before kind of dictates a little bit if you're attacker defender um yeah. i quite like them as a set of five missions if you're playing it i really like them i think it's, it's interesting just, it's just organized garage gaming isn't it basically well it's a it's an organized linked battle campaign that you could play as a tournament which i think would be great in a club slash casual tournament setting yeah um i think the problem is as soon as you don't have any control or house rules around the wild monster thing you're going to see some jank coming into the game. And I think you could write some really op oppressive armies using the incarnate. And I think you might want to rein that in a little bit. Um, 
But I mean, obviously, you could just have at it, gloves off, and see how it goes. Great trick, but... incarnate, seraphon. <laughs> everyone's having fun, right? Just incarnate. I mean, bother with go trick. Just take an incarnate. Yeah. You can't. T- I don't think you could take go trick and an incarnate because he's an ally, right? Go trick. He uses. Uh, he's the same. He's he can't. Oh, have any he's other the, allies, yeah, yeah. Right? So, so they would exclude each other. Yeah, that's yeah. Fair. He might. He might be a mercenary. I don't care. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We know, but we know you're no not for cares. gay trick, Russ. Don't, you no. don't need to go on for hours about how much you love sure. him again. We've no. had plenty of that. So, interesting book. Um, it, it's kind of one of those things that you probably only pick up if you're playing in a event in that setting. Yeah. Um, some good narrative and open play stuff if you're into that. It's not my jam. I guess it depends how much it, you know... <laughs> how incarnates make their way into the game doesn't it because yeah but i don't think you need the book to play it. it's a war scroll no. and one yeah, page of rules that are universal so i i yeah. think you could just you'll plenty be able to gonna work be... that out it's not that hard plenty of people gonna be picking up terrain <laughs> yeah it's a bit strange yeah. you can't buy that incarnate separately um which i would say would hopefully mean that you don't see loads of them but i think people will just use 3d printed or converted ones so i want the guy's head I'm going to be the one person out there buying the incarnate, not the incarnate. I was I tempted to buy the box just because the scenery is nice and I could do with some more scenery, but... One thing I would say about it is the pictures really don't give you a proper indication of the size of the scenery. So, like, the scenery They're in that huge. box is big. Like, yeah. really big. It, it, it had, like, it had measurements on it and stuff. And we know from the Lumina terrain piece, which has got, you know, cascading water coming mm. down it, which one of the terrain pieces in the set has, like they are huge, hefty pieces of terrain with really big footprints. They're quite nice. Well, how big as is well, the so. base on that that incarnate? It must be like Archeon's base. It's huge. Well, there's a there's a picture of it next to. Yeah, Yandrasta. that's what I'm looking at now. I'm looking yeah. at the picture of it, not next to Yandrasta, but next to the um, next to the the table. Like, another, I mean, there. Is that a full size board? That's not. That's a half table, isn't it? That Fondue and Strong look, Point is a half table. I'm trying to work out its. I'm trying to work out its height next to um next to the Stormcast that are by it. Where are you sitting? That oh, in the book. All oh, right, yeah. 105. It's at least three Stormcasts high. But you, if you look on the community website, there's a picture of the board with the terrain on it and it's on the board so you can see pretty much exactly it's probably about five inches across so it looks like it's yeah. a i think yeah, it's probably a terror guy space because that's a half table that that box set that's not a that's not a, a 60 inches by what is it 60 by 44 that's a 30 by 22 so i don't think the terrain's quite as big as you think they are chunky pieces, but it's like they're long. They're long as they're well. Long and, like, yeah, um, nice terrain though. It's a bit like the stuff you got in the Dominion set, which I thought was great. Which yeah. was great. Um, but the the unique ones is the obviously the the bony skeleton and the the waterfall thing, which I love that waterfall thing. So it looks great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was tempted just scenery. to have just... that scenery in my collection because I was like, I actually, yeah. could do with some scenery. Well, you buy that once, and that plus whatever scenery you happen to own already is a mm. is a table. Well, you could buy it? that, and the, the extremist that comes with some terrain and a board and some models, which oh, gives it you is, yeah, yeah. it's the same scenery style, and it gives you the double up on the board. Yeah. Um, they are selling the board separately, which looks like it's got quite a cool swampy other side. But I think that's the same set that's come out with all the all the boards that have come out with the new edition. So in all those sets, so. Yeah, I mean, I. It's not a bad box set. If you want the incarnate, then you probably need to pick it up. But the incarnate does look like a large model, so. Yeah, it's a big boy. Mm-hmm. But that's it. That's Fondian, Fondia, whatever you want to call it. Um, Put us the filthiest list below with an incarnate <laughs> in it and why it's filthy. I the want incarnate, know. I, I know. think, opens some disgusting list combos. Let um, us know what you think, guys. I, I want to see what's the, the most disgusting thing in that. I quite I'm like sure. the idea of Incarnate and Kragnos. Everyone running a re-rollable 3d6 charge sounds great fun. Not for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think like that that in any army with shooting that can pin you and then you could shoot at them while yeah. they're being pinned and that's, you can't that's... kill it. I think Marathi and that, you could pin, you could basically form a wall, right? 
you get 900 points of pretty decent shooting in battle line in indoors currently. Don't know what's going to happen with it, but I imagine those snakes aren't going to evaporate anywhere. So, the interesting thing about the gladiatrix as well that you could do two levels of incarnate in one turn because if you took because it has a wound character of 18, if you did 16 wounds to it, then you get to roll your d3 with the gladiatrix. If you rolled a five or a, f- a three plus, that's two. 16 add two is 18, which is wounds characteristic for rules purposes. It's dead. It doesn't dead. It loses a level. Then you go into the battle shock phase and you roll 3d6. So then you've got to roll over 16. Otherwise, you lose another level. So you could drop two levels in a turn. So there are some stuff in do. the game that could drop it twice, two levels in one turn, like Nagash Finger, Archeon, Nefrata Dagger, that kind of stuff. You could, you could drop it. Um, kills, yeah. So, yeah, interesting. Um, probably not purple sun because you just eat it, right? No, no, yeah, not. Double, double. Um, no, it's cool. So yeah, I I do. I think it's interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about a universal big monster like that. That's very impactful. I kind of do. Uh, how it's adopted into the scene, the competitive scene. Yeah, and it might be everywhere, or it might not. But I imagine there'll be a lot of people putting it in their armies you might find that the top end competitive list don't necessarily need it so they won't take it but i always think it's like a force multiplier right you know you've got your seraphon with your bastilodons and salamanders and suddenly you've got this in your army that you can go and be aggressive and pin people while you shoot out because it's not hard to lose 400 points out that list is it i mean or just a blob army you know you could take like you could take a non-shooting version have Marathi covering this bit of the table, the Incarnate having this bit of the table, and they just put as many wounds as possible here. What about in KO? Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. Just horrific, right? Which is, uh, yeah, I mean, kept safe by a guy who's flying around on a boat who's bound to it. I mean, he's basically like, like in my IDNF, like if I dropped the turtle and bonded that to my Eidolon. Get 100 points as well. Yeah, it's like pretty one more legit. Shot? Is that like no one six five the sharks? Oh, everything's bad. Don't get a lot for a hundred, but you'd probably no, have to no, put no. in an ender spell like life swarm or something. And to gobble up when for you to heal and return your models, and then you gobble it. If you become enemy, obviously you wouldn't. Oh, you do, you, do you would kill your idlon, but you get plus one with rerolls with extra spells. Um, yeah, interesting. Don't know. We'll see how it pans out. But um, that's it. Pre order today. Let us know your thoughts below. Do you have an army list that's going to be filthy with that? Night Haunt players, are you excited? Um, don't know. Like, it's, TBD, it's, we'll find out. Put your list yeah. below. Let us know. It is definitely an interesting one. But um, yeah, it's quite a different product. Obviously, it sounds like there's going to be more seasons of war books. So you've got like. In your Age of Sigma Onion, you've got your core rules, your handbooks, your expansions, your realm rules, your white dwarf extra articles, rules, your white dwarf updates, your, so, your battle thingies, whatever they're called, the recent ones. I'm waiting for Games Workshop to release their their limited edition Age of Sigma book book carry case <laughs> for for all the books college. you need to carry. <laughs> Do you little car like, like a little yeah like a little one of these little little like wheelie cases that you open and it's all the books and they're like you know then it could have dials all over it to track all the admin a whiteboard maybe you know like it's that byron's headache counter the age of the Constantly age of the admin line. case <laughs> just put all your all your stuff you have to track and all your rule books in one place i'm playing with eight kilos of books mate oh, I've got all 10. your battle tactics inscribed down the side that you have to like change every two weeks because they release a new one uh yeah i'm being a bit facetious but you know it's getting a little bit ridiculous so um yeah plenty of layers i don't know what's <laughs> just anymore, really. I'm, I'm hoping that we don't see like too many more like stuff like this that's layered on top that gets adopted everywhere because i think it's just going to add so much bloat to an already bloated mm. game I- you're just going to get to a stage where you have to have a clean wipe, aren't you? And TOs will be like, we're using these two books. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're trying to encourage new players, especially because you cannot, like, 
just having added this, let's say this got adopted wholesale, I don't think I could explain currently, never mind with the addition of this, to a new player what, you know, the seven different things that they could pull rules from or why I was allowed to do something. You know, you don't want to be Would like... Would it be like the person who got their core, they bought their Fury of the Deep or their Arena of Shades and they get their core rule book in there. They've read that. But I know the core rules. The rules? You go to a game, someone puts a fucking swirly dragon bone skeleton on the table, and you go, what's that? I've seen the core rules. Is it? I've got the core rules, not in here. Oh, no, it's Allied in this book. It's yeah, in, no, no. no, it's in this book, which has got core rules in it. But it's not in the core book, which is the core book, but it's in this book, it's got a core thing. So you're like, what? Like, I don't know. It's, like, it's quite difficult describing to people how to make an army uh, to new players these days. So, um, I think, yeah, just going to have to see to what degree this gets adopted. But uh, if much more comes, then... Like a, a, a I think I think needed. just from a even like we saw it with malign sorcery with the realm rules and the realm artifacts on top of people just said we're not using them no. because it just to like strip that out because it's too much on top of on top of on top of so um, I'd like to see what impact this has and I think we'll see a lot of them around in competitive play um, and we'll see how how many cool armies you can have with it but yeah so. That's the uh, that's it. So that's it for the show. Let us know what you think. Do you like yeah, it? Do you hate it? Um, hopefully, you found the video interesting. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, look forward to hearing your list ideas. Um, so hit us up. Let us know. Um, I would say as well, thanks to everyone who supported the Face Hammer GT because we sold out in like twenty four hours. So really good response there. So it's really happy with that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and I've got to get Peyton Myden F because I've got a taunt this weekend. So. We're back we'll on it. More, absolutely. We'll do some more details on what we expect we're going to be. Well, you'll probably hear little bits and bobs of the pack and what we're going to do for Face Hammer GT uh, throughout our upcoming episodes. So, yeah. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Yeah. Um, I got an idea. We talked about the last show around the Predators and Prey, where you basically you just have a, a pool of points that you calculate at the start of the game, and that's just your handicap or your bonus. Don't have to kill anything. And you then just you just don't. It. You just start with it, and then that's it. And we'll make our own custom pools. Some will give you bonuses. Some will give you negatives. Net out. All of our rules will be simple, and you'll have like one pool yeah. stuff for your army, and you'll know exactly what's going on. Pretty yeah, simple. yeah. And then you just basically your opponent will have a number. You'll have a number. Look at the difference. That's what you apply. And there you go. Crack on. Normal warhammer. See if we can fix Gleam Spike. We've tried before. I don't know. I'm not, now I'm suddenly thinking how many points would this thing be worth? I just don't know. Just going to go hide Ooh. in the corner, Ooh. cry at another thing I have to think about. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, buy more Warhammer. Woo. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. See you guys. Bye. Bye.